This video is going to be different from my other videos because I want to share about my experience of having Evo Plus surgery. And this is a lens implant surgery that is the newest type of lens implant available and it just got FDA approved a few months ago, like this spring. So it's huge in terms of the impact of vision surgery like myself who can't get LASIK or PRK because their eyesight is way too bad. And I'm going to share in this video why I got the surgery what kind of surgery and procedure this is and then I'm going to share my vlog in the middle and the very end I'm going to share care instructions that I was given that is not something you can easily find online because again most of what you find on Google and most of what is targeted towards US uh, patients is all about Vivian. So Vivian is the previous surgery that you all probably have seen on online and that is the one that you have to drill a hole in your eye to do. And basically there's no reason <laughs> that I found of why Vivian is a preferable choice to Evo. Evo almost by every marker is far superior to Vivian. And Evo is the newest kind of lens there is available. Actually no, Evo Plus is the newest one in the Evo family. It's the newest type of lens available. And Evo has been in Europe and Asia for like 20 something years and it just got FDA approved in US because we're slow. So Vivian, you have to drill a hole when you do the surgery and that's the one you read online where there's pain and a burning sensation. With Evo, there is no pain because the lens itself has a hole in it and it's ironic because apparently Evo was made in the US yet it only got FDA approved a few months ago. So this is the reason why I chose Evo and if you are someone who is considering lens implant, you may have really bad eyesight problems and you probably are not a candidate for the other surgeries like LASIK or PRK. But why I really like Evo E Plus regardless, because this surgery, according to my doctor, is reversible. So all they have to do is put a two millimeter incision into your eye and they insert the lens in there. And if for some reason you don't like it, something happens, they can also take it out. With the previous lens implant, if they were to do the surgery, they can't undo the hole because that is permanent. And if for some reason you want to remove the lens, the hole is still going to remain there. And the actual procedure itself was really seamless, really easy. Originally, I planned to go to Japan to do the surgery, but unfortunately, they were closed and only open for tourist groups. So I looked into Korea, which has a high medical standard. And this procedure went by relatively so quick, and you'll see my vlog as well. The actual preparation took longer than the surgery. The surgery itself took like 20 something minutes. And they told me beforehand there was gonna be no pain, which I didn't believe because a lot of doctors tell you that, but then when you actually have the surgery, there is still some pain. But really there was no pain. And the only pain I felt was not from the surgery itself. It was like what happened before or what happened after. So it was like after the surgery, they had to give you IV fluids, which is pretty standard. And that little you know prickle, the little needle going in your vein is the only pain I felt from the surgery. You get a vision test to get your lens. And for me, they weren't available immediately. So they had to custom order the lens. But let's say your lens are available. They do a vision test, they dilate your eye, and then they can do the surgery the day of. And after they dilate your eye, they proceed to prepare you for the actual surgery, which is you have to get like this butt shot where they like <laughs> slap your booty and then they put the needle in so you don't feel anything and it's so effective if you have a good nurse. Then afterwards they put a bunch of eye drops in your eye, like different kinds. There's like five different ones, at least five, six, seven different ones they put in. There's ones for like anesthesia, killing bacteria. And then afterwards, you wait there for a little bit. The prep time was longer than the surgery. So by the time I was done waiting, I was so ready for the surgery itself. They put you in a room and you have to lie down. And then they have this thing where they tape over your eye. And my left eye is the most sensitive one, like to light. So after it got dilated, this one was the one that is the most sensitive. And this one is the one that gets most dry. So they put me down. They put the sticker thing over my eye where they like it's like a hole and you look through it and it like has a tape so it makes your eyelids stay open. Then you have to stare into this really, really bright light. It's like imagine a really big sun with your eyes dilated and you know, my left eye again is sensitive and there's the sensation of you want to look away but you can't because it's like bright, bright light. And it wasn't painful. It was just getting a little bit unbearable where I was feeling like I want to like move and look away but you can't. So that took about 10 minutes for this eye. Then it was over and I did the same thing for my right eye and my right eye is not as sensitive. So that went by so quick and that was it. Afterwards, they put like these two little like eye patches on your eye and then you just like, you'll see them vlog. I look like a, I look like a frog cause it looks like 
It has like a little like dome around your eyes and it just like holds it. Then they will you out and they, in the hospital room, they put like the IV drip in your arm to kind of recover. Then you can nap there or you can just like close your eyes for like 45 minutes or an hour. Afterwards, uh, they had me pick up prescriptions uh, for my medicine, which was like downstairs. And depending on your doctor, maybe they'll provide it. You don't have to pick it up or anything, but I picked up mine. It was really bright outside. And I remember at one point it was so bright, I couldn't open my eyes because the sun was like shining right down. So I went to grab sunglasses and um, it was okay after that, but your eyes are really sensitive. And again, I talk about this in my vlog, it's gonna be really foggy and sensitive to light. It's like dilated, but like three times what you normally feel. Afterwards, I went to eat, shopped around a little bit, same as always. Next day, wore sunglasses. It was still, you know, a little foggy. So let me show you my vlog and afterwards, I'll share my care instructions with you all of what I received from my doctor. And again, I couldn't find any of this online. I was actually quite surprised by how in-depth the instructions were. Before I show you the vlog, I wanna mention one thing. Remember, before you have Evo Plus surgery, you cannot wear your contact lens. If they're soft, you can't wear them for a week before surgery. If they're hard, like RGP, you can't wear them for two weeks before surgery. So just keep that in mind as you're watching this. Good morning, you all. It is the morning of my surgery, and I'm so excited because after this, I will no longer have to wear contacts or glasses. I'm currently putting on sunscreen to get ready and walk to my hospital, which is about 12 minutes away. And I'm a little nervous to be honest because I don't know what to expect. I mean, they're going to make an incision in my eye to put the lens in. They said it's going to be painless, but I don't know. There's going to be at least a little bit of pain because the needle is going to have to go through my arm for the IV part. So you have to stay hydrated when you have the surgery so they have fluids that go in but I'm a little nervous also because I hope it goes well I hope it's what I expected you know I hope I have perfect vision and this would be the only time I have to do the surgery kind of like one take and go but yeah I'm also very excited because I no longer have to wear contacts anymore and I no longer have to wear glasses anymore I mean do you see how thick my glasses are they're usually the thickest in like an office. So yeah, I just finished putting on my sunscreen and we're getting ready to head out. So before the surgery, they have you sign a contract that states that you are aware of the terms and conditions and basically knowing that there are risks with the surgery and that you will follow instructions afterwards. Then explain to me how the surgery works, which is a two millimeter incision behind a certain part of the eye. Then they put a bunch of eye drops in my eye, including anesthesia, so I don't feel anything. And they also put in two butt shots, which I will not be showing here. But basically they slap your butt really hard before putting the needle in so you don't feel anything. Here's a quick snapshot of some of the eye drops they used. I'm ready for surgery. Here I am. Um, I had everything on. I got two blood shots and then a bunch of eyedrop stuff. And I'm about to go in. Can't take my phone with me, but yeah, hope it goes well. I just had my surgery. Uh, it was definitely very disoriented because there was a lot of lights and it was an interesting experience to say the least. But right now I have a fluid uh, IV stuck in my arm. Uh, they had to try three times, but Otherwise, the surgery went really well, and I am currently going to take a nap or rest. So, I just left the hospital, and I went to grab the sunglasses from a shop down the street because my eyes are super sensitive right now, which I was really surprised by. Everything is just way too bright. Like, if there's anywhere that has too much sun, it blinds me. And it's still pretty blurry, so, like... 50% of my vision is still very blurry. It's like um, when you wear glasses and there's like oil film everywhere. And right now I plan to just go back to my hotel and relax for the day. I really thought that after the surgery I was gonna go around shopping. <laughs> for some reason I thought it was not gonna be that hard, but it's just way too bright for me right now. So I'm gonna head back, probably go find somewhere to eat and then chill out. Okay, so it's been about three hours since my surgery and the sensitivity to brightness has really gone down. Like I'm right now able to walk without feeling sensitive to my eye. Granted, the sun has went down, so uh, it's been a lot better, but the blurriness has also gone down by like 90%. And it feels like I'm wearing contacts even though I have nothing on, which is insane. Uh, I can't believe this is how most people just like wake up and are bored feeling being able to see and this is such a cool thing that I'm living in an era where I can get this 
technology and I think the surgery went pretty well so I'm happy about that. I'm almost back in my hotel. I just went grocery shopping to buy a bunch of snacks and maybe even bring some back home. And I think in terms of blurriness, it's still, it's still at a 90% reduction. There's a lot of halo lights from the glare, you know, of lights just at night. And I hope that doesn't stay. And I don't, I don't think it will stay, but that's just one thing I've noticed. And I might be breathless because these stairs are really steep. You're not supposed to exercise after the surgery, but it's just a quick walk. I just took a shower and this hit me like a train that I don't have to take on the contacts anymore. And it sounds so obvious when you say it out loud, but when you're actually going into your routine, you forget this and it's the realization is crazy. So I was getting ready to take out my contacts, going to my skincare routine. And I realized I don't have to do that anymore for the rest of my life. Like I don't have to take out contacts for the rest of my life or put glasses on or put them on in the morning or take them off. And I don't have to do anything to take away perfect sight. Like I can just wake up, go to sleep with the same vision. It's just oh, it's mind boggling. This is so crazy and it was all worth it. Good morning, it's day two. So far my vision has been pretty good. I just woke up about an hour ago. And the only thing I noticed is when I open the windows, I see like circular halo rings and I think that's supposed to go away. But I'm going to head to the clinic to get my eyes checked by the eye pressure machine, the little machine that spits wind in your eye and see how it goes. So it is day three after my surgery. Everything has went really well. Uh, everything is clear. I see still a little bit of the halo lights, the rings, but it's not that noticeable. And I also have a bit of a dry eye, which he prescribed an ointment for me. But aside from that, he checked my eyes again today and everything went really well. So he also said that the surgery was a success. So that's really good to hear. So I have fully recovered from my surgery and right now my vision is 2020 and there's still a little bit of halo rings when there's light but other than that things are looking pretty good uh yeah and also uh, i will say that the vision has been pretty good overall things have been just really crisp and i haven't experienced too much side effects so not too much dryness even though they did give me some eye drops and i've been taking the medicine there's like four different sets and uh Aside from that, not many cons. I definitely recommend this to everyone who may wear contact lenses because they were really dry in my eye and actually contact lenses are really not that great for your eye, hence why your optometrists don't wear them. But yeah, aside from that, it's been pretty good and now I'm flying back home after this. Editor Lily here. I just realized after filming that I forgot to tell you all the price of the surgery. So I paid 5.25 million won, which is about 3,640 US dollars. Now, this concludes everything except the medication, which I paid out of pocket for in the pharmacy, which I picked up it. And I would say it's a pretty good deal because in the US, you can expect to pay 9,000 to $10,000 in the Bay Area and you're charged extra for the first appointments and consultations, which can range from 200 and $300. And if you know Koreans or local family or Localers in Korean that can help you negotiate a price, you could potentially get even lower than the rate that I had. And I feel like the rate I had might be foreign rate because it was around the same as what the other clinics quoted me in English. So I feel like what I got was the foreign rate. So if you're good at negotiating with a Korean or you can speak the language or you're, you have a local on your side, then I think you could potentially get even a better rate. Hey, welcome back. Before I go into the care instructions, I know some of y'all are probably curious about which clinic I went to. I went to a small local Korean clinic that was recommended to me by someone I trust. And I don't want to share this publicly because I don't want to come off as a promoter. Like this video is not meant to promote anything. You know, I didn't take any kind of exchange or monetary or kind of value exchange to make this video. This is 100% my own will to share information for the sake of sharing Evo Plus because it's not widely known in the US yet. Uh, the information that I have gotten, like for example, the care instructions, I couldn't find this information anywhere online. So this video is only for the sake of my experience. I'm not a medical professional. For the outcome, it's amazing. Like I remember getting my wisdom tooth removed and I was like high on the anesthesia and I was just like, it took me a while to recover because it was like general anesthesia. But this surgery was like, relatively so smooth and so quick the fact that i could go out afterwards to shop for sunglasses just tells you the 
mindset I was in where I was like, oh, okay, cool, I'm done, and like, let me go shopping. And then I also went to eat afterwards and you know did some stuff before I ran back to my hotel. So first thing is, you have two types of eye drops that they give you. One of them is Vegamox, the eye drops, which you have to use three hours after the surgery, like every day, three hours. So that's about four times a day. Then you have another one called the Lotte Max eye drop. Uh, the names can vary based on your doctor, but this one you also have to use three times, uh, four times every three hours. So if you stay awake for 12 hours, then you have to use it uh, four times. So Vigamox and Lotamox, you have to use it um, once every three hours. Then we have the medicines that you have to take. So I think there was like three sets of medicines, like pills. You have to take it every time with a meal. So there's that. Um, then there's a bunch of instructions, which is things you cannot do. You can only wash your face one week after the surgery. And you can't scrub your eyes or have severe simulations, like don't get hit in the eye or like, you know, touch your eye. You have to wear an eye patch when you sleep at night uh, for two weeks. You can only use makeup on your face one week after surgery, so not two weeks, but one week. But with eye makeup, you can only use it one month. So you can put like foundation on your face one week after surgery, but eye makeup only one month after surgery. You cannot close your eyes strongly on the day of surgery, so do not like, you know, wince or anything like that. You can't lower your head too much or pick up anything heavy. You have to pay attention to getting hit in the in the eyes. Like, be careful of like you know going out to play sports or like tennis balls or anything like that. You have to like really protect your your eyes. Again, because there's a chance that uh, you could like what they told me that when you get hit in the eye, the lens itself is relatively fine. It's the lens that could cause tear like tear in the tissues of your eye that you have to be careful. And then the other thing is that right after you have surgery, you want to like basically alleviate the stress as much as possible from your eye because again, you don't want the detachment issue happening. You cannot use a public sauna, a spa, or uh, have a perm for three to four weeks after surgery. So no bath, no sauna, no spa sort of thing. You can only go jogging, uh, do weight training, yoga for one to two weeks after surgery. So no yoga, no weight training, no jogging for one to two weeks, basically no working out. You can go swimming and do tough sports like football or boxing from three to four weeks after surgery. You cannot drink alcohol for two weeks after surgery and you cannot over drink for one month after surgery. So if you're someone who likes a party, you can't do that for at least a month. And if something happens, they tell you to call the emergency um, manager, but obviously I was returning back to the US so I couldn't do that. But yeah, there are a lot of instructions and things you have to follow afterwards, so best prepared to like probably find some good books to read for a month or so. Again, I'm not a medical professional, I am just giving my perspective as a patient and someone who grew up with the chronic bad eyesight who was legally blonde, who, who was legally blind, not blonde, who had to wear heavy glasses and hard lens contacts and do everything else possible under the roof to you know be able to see and who was when i grew up picked on a lot for having heavy glasses and you know very heavy astigmatism so i've been through all of that and now as someone who doesn't have to wear anything you know i wear glasses sometimes as decoration or like for the blue light thing but other than that you know it is it's been such a great uh great outcome and the fact that i feel like i can wake up every day and feel normal it's all worth it so yeah if y'all have any questions Feel free to let me know below, and if you want to keep up with me in my journey, subscribe to Design a Lily, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.